From the beautiful Amity High School in Woodbridge, Connecticut, it's the 2022 CIAC Class L semifinal. Tonight, the first seeded Darianne Blue Wave take on the fourth seeded Glastonbury Guardians with a trip to Weathersfield on Saturday for the Class L championship on the line. Hi, everybody. Join alongside me shortly will be the Darianne Field Hockey JV coach, Kari Johns. I'm Braden Shank, and we welcome you to this DAF Media production of the CIAC tournament here this year. Glastonbury coming in 13-3, and looking to pull up the upset. Would only be the second upset in this year's tournament. Darian looking to march their way back to the state championship. They fell short last season to Wilton in a, uh, a game for the ages at Norwalk's Test of Field. That was Darian's last loss. They have had the perfect season this year, 16-0 in the regular season, 3-0 in the FCAC tournament and so far 2-0 in this state tournament riding the high goal scoring 129 goals on the season so they're going to look to continue that type of production as Glastonbury's going to need to try to slow them down with their goalkeeper Alex Edwards the junior who is in her first year for this young Guardians team. Glastonbury the Central Connecticut Conference champion against the FCAC champion so two powerhouses going to battle and like I said a trip to Saturday's State championship on the line at the Weathersfield High School Complex. Usually a very storied day for high school field hockey. Casey Benoit will start Darian off as she sends the aerial ball. We're underway in the state quarterfinals. And Darian in their home white jerseys moving from right to left on your screen. Greenwich in their road reds moving from left to right. Quickly that ball sent out of play and Cardinals will get the restart with Cementi. Short pass over the middle, finds its way to Bab. And over past the stick of Thompson. Ball going to Darien. Again, the rain is going to be a big factor in this one. Those passes are going to be quicker than expected out there on the turf. So it's going to be a matter of who can adjust to it as Darien, the give and go to Benoit, right back to Dagavides. Getting the touch to Massey in the defensive end. Here's Katie Savino, the junior. Intercepted by Thibault. Thibault just tri tripped up by Massey on it. Whistle will turn it over to Darian. It's a great defense played by the Cornell lacrosse bound Morgan Massey. All over to Massey once again. Dagavidi's now on the far side. She'll give the short pass to Benoit. Aerial ball finding its way all the way down, looking for Bach. Falling to the ground is Hokeman on it. And so now quick restart for Darian. Half good. This one on nets and sent past the end line. Restart to Darianne on the attacking 25. It'll be Ashley Stockdale. Johns is now going to send this one on net through some traffic. Regained by Stockdale. Being pushed out by a pair of Greenwich defenders, and that's the first penalty corner of the match. A place where the Blue Wave has seen much success this season on the penalty corner. And Casey Benoit will now insert just a couple minutes in to this state quarterfinal. First, she's going to tie the shoe, but she's got Johns, Bach, Stockdale, and Wilkes up top. Branch has the four defenders ready. Jansen in net. Insert by Benoit. Up top, stopped by Johns. Reyna, sweep shot on the ground, kick saved by Jansen. Rebound to Stockdale. Stockdale still dribbling with it and off the foot of number 25, Samanti, and give it a second penalty corner for the wave. Casey Benoit back to insert for Darianne. Benoit on the insert, up top once again, stopped by Johns, past her stick. And now here's Stockdale on the regroup, good pass to Johns. John's the shot on that stop by Jansen. Now Muffleman's going to try to clear it out. Two saves for Jansen thus far. 
And now quick interception and turnover in Darian's favor. Stockdale off the foot again of a Greenwich defender. And Darian will get their third try at a penalty corner. So great job by Darian Stockdale. The dribble into that circle, forced the penalty corner. And now Casey Benoit back to insert. Greenwich huddling up, getting the game plan, looking to stop a third Darian attempt on this corner. Benoit gets the signal. She'll insert it up top to Johns. Raina Johns, pass over to Wilkes. The shot by Wilkes, stopped by Jansen, the rebound. Knocked away by Hokeman. And that was Belager coming over to help. But a good save by Kelly Jansen. Bakken, the circle once again. She'll dribble her way, look to finish it just past the reach of Blake Wilkes. Good attempt and good look from Kate Bach. Not able to find the finishing touch of Blake Wilkes. Now Wilkes getting the ball right back. She'll be tripped up by Muffleman. Muffleman on that one, trying to play the defense. And now it's grabbed by Hapgood. Hapgood to Benoit, looking to go to Stockdale. Gets the pass, sends this one. Stopped again by Jansen. Kelly Jansen making her fourth save early in this one. She had 21 last year in, in the quarterfinals against New Canaan. So she definitely is accustomed to making the big stops and giving another corner to Daring Ann. Darian has come close on all four of their penalty corner attempts. And now Casey Benoit will trot over to insert once again. So far, a majority of this first quarter going in favor of Darian's possession. Not able to get the goal on it just yet. We'll see if they can change that. Here's Benoit. She inserts it up to Stockdale. Stockdale, dribble, shoot. Off the deflection, and it's in. Casey Benoit scoring for Darian. A good ball sent on net from Stockdale, and Benoit was there for the deflection to give Darian the 1-0 lead. A great sequence ending with Benoit burying the deflection, and just like that, Darian has themselves a lead with about nine minutes left in this opening quarter. Roll reversal from when these teams met in the regular season. It was Greenwich that got up to the one nothing lead early on. Darien now getting the early lead as they score their 126th goal on the season. Four twenty left before the half. Herschel has to Tietmeyer. Meyer now across the midfield. On that far side, that one's keeping it with the Stags. Pompeo. Fairfield looking for some offense in this one. They've had the three shots on goal, all of which coming on penalty corners. So the Stags have not had a shot other than those penalty corners. A shot on goal, I should say. Herschel with the restart back to Held Horset. Held Horset again had that second goal for Quinnipiac on the deflection from Tietmeyer. Dribbling her way out of traffic is Mengadi. This one struck all the way downfield. Finds the receiver. Here's Alex Sr. Sr. will lose it to Santor, but get the penalty corner. Bell Horsett's getting an explanation from the referee on that one. She thought she was just playing defense, but the call is against her, and Alex Sr. will give Bearfield their third penalty corner of the afternoon. Again, the past two penalty corners have resulted in good possessions for Fairfield. They would get at least one shot on net but they have not been able to beat Santor 
here in this first half. Here, all play with the insert. And up top, she's got Van Dyke, Huffman, and Saxon. Quinnipiac getting ready in their cage. Meryl Blay up top, stopped. This one, Van Dyke. A sweep shot on the ground through some traffic. Senior's going to try and score. Alex Senior puts Fairfield on the board. The penalty corner once again creates offense, and the third time's the charm for Alex Senior and Fairfields. The fourth goal on the season from the for the freshman from Marlton, New Jersey. And Fairfield gets back in striking distance in this one. Huffman sent the ball, stopped through some traffic, found its way right to the stick of Alex Sr. And it was definitely a different approach that head coach Jackie Kane took on that penalty corner. Not going for the shot, slowed it down with Van Dyke, found Alex Sr. And that time paid off as now here is... Hoskins looking to dribble away into the circle. Off the foot of a Quinnipiac player awarding Fairfield the second corner, corner here as of late. Fairfield looking for some late heroics here in the end of this first half. Alex Sr. coming up clutch. She scored two against Merrimack. And she picks up a fourth goal on the 2022 campaign, or fourth collegiate goal as well. As they're going to look to repeat it as Mira Alblay will insert. Mira Alblay, the grad student from Norwalk, Connecticut. Not too far from here. She'll be the inserter. Same formation. Saxon, Van Dyke, Hoffman. Hoffman up top. And you got Alex Senior to the near side. Inserts it. Stopped by Van Dyke. This one shot on net. And it's in! Fairfield comes right back, storming with Van Dyke. Tying this one up. Carmel Van Dyke on the penalty corner picks up her second on the season. And just like that, we are tied at University Fields. A big goal from Fairfield on that one. And just like that, over the span of two minutes, Fairfield puts two goals on the board, and we are tied at two.